On this episode of New Salts, I install and test the anemometer that I'll be using for my DIY wind vane autopilot project. I'm Anna, and this is Ignacio. We, along with our daughter Elena and our pup Bay, are the new salt selling crew. We are DIYers with a growing appetite for big adventure. Our goal is to DIY and trade our way up to a blue water worthy boat and set sail on an adventure by sea. We are new to selling and plan to develop our selling skills along the way. Subscribe to stay up to date with our progress and adventures. We're about to install the anemometer for the DIY wind vane. Um, this is just going to be a temporary install to test everything, get it all calibrated, but I do have all the software finished. Um, as far as the wind gauge goes, I'm still autopilot's going to be kind of phase two, but just want to get the wind gauge working, get the app going so that everything communicates properly um, and does what I want it to do. And then I'll, uh, I'll integrate this into the autopilot so I can have wind driven uh, autopilot. So I'm going to install the, uh, the base for this uh, anemometer on the top of the mast. This system is actually designed for a remote weather station, but uh, because it's all outdoor and uh, harsh environment rated, it'd be fine. Uh, this base that I'm gonna be mounting today is just gonna be mounted with uh, tape, electrical tape probably, and zip ties for right now. Eventually I'm gonna make a mount that's actually like screwed to the mast. This is just way too big, but uh, this will work for now. So I'm gonna install this on the mast, install the anemometer on the mast, and then we'll set the mast up, get everything tested and calibrated, um, and then move on to the next phase of this project. All right, so I ended up only attaching it with two zip ties. Uh, it actually appears that that should be fine. Uh, it, it's pretty, it's on there fairly good. Like I said, I'm not going to sail or anything with it. It's just going to be so I can step the mast here at the house, test the uh, test and calibrate the wind vane, make sure everything works like I intend it to, and then uh, we'll, we'll step the mast back down and design a more permanent mounting solution for, for this. Also, this is this arm is extremely long. It's a uh, much longer than it needs to be for my application, but it will work for right now. As you can see, it sticks off the mast pretty far. I would actually want it to. So my my current idea is to to weld a aluminum pipe to a flat piece of aluminum and screw it in a similar location to the current wind vane uh, or the windex and then angle it to where it comes up beside the uh, the current windex so that the the current windex can spin 360 but this is also completely above the mast uh, just to the just to the right of it so just to the starboard side of it so we'll uh, we got plenty of time to think about how that's gonna work because we still got some time before this will be completely ready but um, to test things, go ahead and get it mounted and see what it does. It's lined up pretty close there. I think uh, I think that'll work for this test. Actually, I'm gonna just adjust a hair. This cable on this uh, anemometer is only 12 feet, so the original ones are actually 40. Uh, but since this is like an aftermarket for some uh, specific weather station, uh, it's only 12 feet long. So I have a, uh, a breakout for this. So I'm going to plug it in and then I have some more cable. I'll just tap it in and then run it all the way to my controls. Uh, eventually, this will have a, a weather tight connection that'll probably go all the way into here. I'll probably redo the entire connection if I can access. The inside of this housing. We'll just see how that looks when we get down to it. Alright, 
And then uh, once we get everything raised up, I'll cut this to length and uh, I'll terminate it based on my little chart cheat sheet I made here. And we'll uh, go down the mast now and I'll just electrical tape around the mast uh, in a few places to keep this in place. All right, my anemometer is spinning and pointing. Have the uh, cable taped all the way down the mast, running down, transferring over to Cat5 cable, and then running all the way to the garage. I'm gonna run this inside. I'm gonna run this inside to my office and we will see what the readings look like. All right, so I've got my cable run in. I'm actually in the garage because the baby's sleeping. I don't wanna make noise in the office talking to the GoPro, so. Um, I have the cable running into the garage. I've got, I cut off a little bit of extra so that if I do this through the shop, I have enough slack. I have it tied off here just in case somebody trips over it for the time being. And then I'm gonna terminate this end to my breadboard and we'll hook it up to the laptop, see what the LCD reads, see what our serial monitor reads, and hopefully we get some good readings and everything seems to work. This is a little bit of a long cable. I mean, we're looking at probably a hundred, close to a hundred feet of a uh, Cat5 cable. So I hope that there's not too much of a voltage draw through that uh, and my, my electronics still work. We'll see how that looks. All right, so our Cat5 is coming in. It's terminated. We got our, uh, our code here. We'll click on the serial monitor in a minute and uh, we'll see what this wind indicator reads. So, like I said, I've got this Cat5 cable coming in. I've got a little over 100 feet of it, I think. I'm a little concerned about the voltage, but I guess we'll, we'll know pretty quick whether or not it's gonna cause us some issues. So, anyway, we'll fire it up and see what it does. Got connection. We've got wind direction. We do not have currently any wind speed. Let's see. Let's go out and see if it's actually spinning or not. And it is barely spinning. I'll look at my serial monitor and see if you get any feedback there or not. My LCD. So this is wind apparent. True wind, which isn't doing anything yet. I just have a default value in there. And then wind direction. So you can see our wind direction is working. Our wind apparent is not in the true wind. I just have an arbitrary number of nine in there just for placeholders. I'm gonna dig through the code, see if I can get some some feedback. If not, we may need to uh, shorten up this cable or you know see what see what's going on. Anyway, we'll check back in a minute. All right, so I'm troubleshooting this uh, apparent wind reading. Um, I think the code in the system is okay because I jumped a ground wire to where the pulse ground from the apparent wind uh, input, this blue wire would be, and the uh, the apparent wind does pulse. So I'll show you guys that here. Uh, 
out. So I'm going to disconnect the blue so we're not sending the signals back. I'm going to jump this over. So every pulse, it, it calculates the time between pulses to, to get the wind. So I'm going to pulse this to ground. You can see that timing assumed an 11 mile an hour wind. 18. I'm just going to keep pulsing it. So I am, I'm just not getting any ground pulses back through this blue wire. So I need to figure out why, maybe a wiring issue, or it may just be too long of a, of a run. So we'll, uh, I'm going to go troubleshoot it up at the mast and see what it looks like. All right. So I can't reach it with a ladder, not safely anyway. So. And I just step the mask back down and tinker with it while it's on the ground and then stand it back up if uh, I can get it going. Alright, the mask is back down and uh, we'll take apart this termination and see if something isn't connected correctly. So it looks like we just had a bad connection at the uh, breakout on the mast because as soon as I plugged it in the wind gusts and I was getting a reading of three miles an hour and then I turn on the serial monitor and it's only displaying any time the uh, wind indicator sends a signal as you can see we've gotten a bunch of pings already so I'm gonna assume that there's just a, a poor connection at the breakout to this cat 5 cable it appears that the link doesn't really affect it so i'm going to step the mast again and see if it'll read when it's up there again all right it's now working we don't have very much wind out today but as you can see in the monitor i'm getting values uh, the highest i've seen is about four miles an hour but it's reading and it seems to be Pretty accurate relative to the conditions I'm seeing outside. I need to get some sort of handheld unit to test it against, make sure my calibration's correct. Uh, but so far, so good. It's at least linear. You know, it may have to be adjusted, uh, but it's at least working. So it's good news. Anyway, we'll go out and uh, watch it work for a minute, and that'll about wrap this up till I get the autopilot stuff and some GPS figured out. On our next episode, I'll begin designing and developing the app that I'll be using to control the DIY Autopilot Wind Vane project. If you enjoy our videos, please like, subscribe, and share them with your friends.